Thank you for waiting. Hello everyone again. So exciting. This is the last webinar in our virtual discovery session series. We had a fantastic week and thanks for all the support. Um, for those of you who don't know us, my name is Ash. I'm a product specialist. I'm here with my amazing colleague, Alistair Smith. Hi all. Um, good to have you all here today. Thanks, Al. All right, if this is the first webinar you're attending this week, then just a quick slide on housekeeping. We have divided our presentation into two 20-minute sessions, allowing a 10-minute Q&A break in between. I do request that you wait until the breaks to ask any questions. However, um, please feel free to raise your hand at any point if you have any technical difficulties during the presentation. Um, I have my colleagues, Mary and Nell, here to help us today. Um, so they'll be able to um, sort those issues out for you. You can also use the chat options to type in your questions or chat with fellow participants. There'll be plenty of time for questions at the end of each session, so don't stress. Okay, the focus for this session is going to be showcasing Weissnet's VET student loan and higher education workflows that can help increase efficiency as well as reduce reporting pressures during this challenging period. The pandemic has obviously forced organisations like yours to reimagine how you deliver an engaging and holistic learning experience for your learners. While it presents its challenges, it is also a massive opportunity to break out of old habits and create new and impactful strategies that take advantage of technology and automation today. We'll also be looking at defining and reviewing learner life cycle stages um, with a focus on reporting requirements. As you can see on the right, there are mainly four types of learners. Your future learners were discovering and inquiring for your courses. Now it's important to reflect on how you wish your learners to be enrolled and what processes can be implemented that will streamline this and reduce the capacity for errors or for information to be missed. Then you have your commencing learners. Obviously at this stage, it is very important to assess their eligibility and obtain more information prior to them officially enrolling and completing their ECAPs and other things. Then you have your continuing learners. At this stage, you have to ensure the details are up to date, correct and compliant. The statement of fees, invoices, CAN notices and ECAF progressions are all sent on time and accurately to the right people. Then you have your completed learners, the graduates and the alumni with whom you may want to communicate about work placements or pathways to universities if you have tie-ups with universities. Let Vice and LRM do the heavy lifting to automate your manual processes and manage compliance with a more intuitive, clear and easy to use interface. Provide your learners with a first class journey from the initial point of inquiry right through to graduation with leading integrated applications, automation and workflow tools. Manage your courses, enrollment, compliance, sales, finance, as well as e-learning all in one platform. Lastly, Alistair will be addressing the taxi project and the production rollout in the later half of the session today. Now let's look at each stage in detail. In today's competitive world, obviously the way you manage your sales and marketing activity is critical to your training provider's success. You want to be able to publish your courses online, take enrollment inquiries and make managing the sales process by converting every inquiry to an enrollment easy, accurate and timely. We offer a one-stop shop solution to all your needs. Let's start with your website. I'm sure you all have websites, but is it ready for this digital change and the upswing? A bunch of experts are at your disposal from marketing to graphic design, SEO, web development, AdWords, e-commerce, and much more. Book in a time to get your website health check done for free and increase your footprint in the digital space. Empower your learners to discover, inquire, apply, as well as pay online. The online enrollment links can be added to your website easily with no coding knowledge required. 
streamline your manual processes and improve your data integrity. Use the app to convert your website visitors and sales leads into clients by providing them a better user experience. If you're providing both Red Student Loan and Higher Education um, help, customize just the Red Student Loan course offers to gather the evidence details. The applicants can accept your terms and conditions, download, read and accept policies, upload eligibility documents and pay online if they're paying upfront fees. As you already know, the Australian government is extending the US side to the higher education sector. From Jan 2021, new higher education students will be required to apply for or hold a US side before the first census date. And by 2023, all these students, including those who have commenced prior to 2021, must have a USI. The USI is also being replaced by CHESIN, which is the current Commonwealth Higher Education Student Support Number. Use the online enrollment app to make entering the USI mandatory for your learners. WiseNet also has a direct integration with the USI registry for you to retrieve and verify, verify those USIs real time from within the LRM. You can receive email notifications when a new application is submitted. You can also access them via the sales dashboard at any point. Administrators can review each course enrollment to check for certifications and eligibility before accepting the enrollment. The plugin also creates new learner records for new applicants and updates existing ones as needed. Thus checking for any duplicate learners. Set your enrollment statuses and enroll them into units and units of study as applicable from the same page. You can further update key enrollment details like access red student loan or fee help by navigating to the learner's enrollment record from the same section. If you're looking for a completely customized sales and online enrollment application, then we have our API. Through the Wisted API and with the adequate um, development resources, you can connect your Wisted account to anything. This provides endless possibilities to integrate all the systems in your business into one enterprise-wide platform, which can drastically reduce inefficiencies within your business. If you don't want to invest on an online enrollment platform or a developer to build an integration at this moment, use our sales section within LRM. This is available in all our editions and the best part is you can assign your marketing staff to access just the sales section. They can create contacts such as learners, workplaces, as well as agents if you're dealing with international students. You can create your own sales stages and progress um, each opportunity through the sales funnel and see where everything is at one glance. Capture every email conversation or document against each contact's logbook. You can see all events in the timeline, making it easy for you to pick up from where you left off. If you're still stuck using spreadsheets, then redesign your business processes to make them digital friendly. Cloud-based solutions like Wisenet reduce complexity and streamline operations, which can accelerate efficiency and give providers like you a competitive advantage. Moving the learner to the closed one stage will also enable you to easily enroll them into the appropriate courses and assign them to the appropriate units of study. Now, before I go into the next stage in the learner life cycle, let's look at some key customization tools that you can use to set up for data collection and reporting purposes. Create and manage your approved courses easily. Many of the reportable fields like special course type and field of education are already pre-populated with values that you can easily choose from and report. Set up when, how and where courses and units of study are delivered with course offers. You can also quickly copy course offers to create future intakes. If you have rolling intakes, easily copy units of study within a course offer with new census dates as well. There are many drop-down fields that can be customized, which are not reportable. Customizing drop-down values can provide you better insight on learner data, as well as personalized information tailored to your business needs. 
you can access these fields from the settings tab um, and it's called a drop down list on the left. Let's take an example of um, a field, the enrollment status reason field. You can create reasons like extended medical leave or missing identity check and so on to trigger workflows as well as run accurate reports. Use email templates crafted for straightforward and effective communication. You can automate message delivery to individuals or groups once conditions have been met as well. Wisely provides you with a choice of pre-designed templates. However, you can create and upload your custom template as quickly as editing a Word document. Your report is an easy way to build and generate document templates such as welcome letters, invoices, cans, certificates and other general templates. Now the next stage, enrollment. As mentioned earlier, it is very important to assess their eligibility and obtain more information prior to them officially enrolling and completing their ECAPS. Capture key compliance details for every learner within their profile, be it Bet Student Loan or Higher Education. Enter key enrollment details at the course and unit of study level, update the commencement and outcome dates, results, as well as loan information as applicable for each unit of study. You can also auto calculate loan fees and help debts based on whether the student is paying upfront or accessing much student loan or higher education help. And also based on the enrollment statuses you choose against the unit of study enrollment as um, you may have some state government funded learners as well within the same course offer. Wisenet's ECAP integration allows you to send course enrollment information directly from Wisenet to ECAF and be informed when a learner completes his process, making ECAF easy and automated. We are also in the process of incorporating USI to the ECAF process. Alistair will take you into the details further. You can view the status of the application from the reports ECAF page or from the learner's course enrollment page um, or the ECAF system of course. You can see all pending and unprocessed ECAPs on this page. If you run face-to-face -face courses, schedule your classes, trainers and venues using the timetables feature. You can update attendance in bulk or for individual students with accuracy right down to the minute. As mentioned earlier, use your reports to create your invoices and cans and then use the scheduled cans and invoices feature to set up scheduled nightly activities to send invoices or cans to learners by email. This service will automatically check for course enrollments that have a matching unit of study enrollment census date to generate the invoice, can and email and email them individually to the learners. You can specify how many days in advance you want your chosen automated can template, can template uh, to be sent along with your um, chosen message template. Now, earlier this year, we communicated to um, you guys that we have replaced this service to use the new LearnCycle engine, which gives you the benefit of improved performance and delivery status tracking. We did communicate at that time to remove the delivery organization setup which was previously required a transition from vet, vet fee help to vet student loan. If you're unsure if you have set this up correctly, please do call us or log a ticket and we'll be happy to review this for you. Now, same like the cans and invoices, most of your manual administrative processes can be automated with LearnCycle workflows. For example, you can have a workflow to trigger tasks for sending ECAPs and assign them to the appropriate staff two business days after the course enrollment creation day. Add due dates and track progress of these tasks. Choose the logic for what creates a trigger, like the enrollment status and status reasons, which can then automate your chosen workflows. Create course offer lists and send the inf information to the right learners at the right time. As you already know, the demand for online learning has changed into a basic need today. The learners want their course content assessments online. This is regardless of whether the mode of delivery is in a classroom or online. The Moodle add-on allows you to sync learners and their enrollments into Moodle and bring back grades into WiseNet. This can reduce double handling 
and streamline administrative processes. You can choose to host the application yourself or have WiseNet host it for you. You're releasing a new grade integration along with the auto grade feature in a couple of weeks, which will enable you to set your own grade rules to update the outcome result as well as date fields in WiseNet based on the grades in Moodle. We had an exclusive webinar on this topic yesterday. You can access the recording from our videos page on LEARN. Learner app. This is a great tool for your learners to update their own details, see any um, you know, attendance or timetables or classes that have been scheduled, access their e-learning from within the Learner app, view any documents that you've shared with them, and as well as look at invoices if you integrate with Xero. You can also use Learn Cycles to manage their access and invitation and send email reminders to your students from within LRM. We also have the trainer app for your trainers. If you're running those lectures face-to-face, -face, your trainers can easily mark attendance, update results and communicate with their learners from within the class list. They can access learner records and their tasks from the dashboard as well. If you host Moodle with us, then trainers can use the same login to access Moodle from the WiseNet portal page. Anyone with a WiseNet login will be able to follow their own activities. You can assign tasks to yourself as reminders or to other staff members. You can also keep track of your overall team tasks. You can receive email notifications when you're assigned a task or a task that you assign has been updated. Now at this point, I'm gonna just quickly um, Pause for a Q&A break. If you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand or type in your questions in the Q&A box that you see at the bottom of your Zoom panel. Or of course, use the chat option. Thank you. MARI API stands for Application Programming Interface. So we have some endpoints. The endpoints are nothing but fields that you already have in your LRM. So if you um, you know, have a developer, he can actually, um, you know, kind of integrate any application that you have within your business with LRM, with WiseNet, basically, using those endpoints. Thank you. Is the automated CAN or invoice an extra fee? The automation is definitely part of a premium, so I'm not sure what edition you're on. I'm happy to look into it for you after the session. Please to raise a ticket and will be happy to help you. Thank you. If the student does not have a US site, can they be notified automatically? Uh, not at this stage, but that's a great um, feature, I think. So Al, so Al and I will take a note of it. Thank you. But you can definitely retrieve the US site real time if they don't already have one, so you don't have to notify them. But if like, you know, if they've not applied for one, definitely, you know, an email would be nice to send it to them, asking them to apply for one. Great. Any other questions? Just going to quickly check even the chat if... Awesome. Thank you. So I think we'll just go ahead. So at this stage, obviously the progression stage, you'll have to ensure um, the details are up to date, correct and compliant, not only for your current and continuing learners, but also learners that are withdrawing um, or suspending their course. Easily update those outcomes for units and units of study from the learners unit enrollment page. Use the Learn Cycle workflows to automatically send confirmation emails with um, withdrawal letters to learners as soon as the course enrollment status is updated to withdrawn. You can easily send progression summaries to vet student loan enrollments. As you may already know, these forms need to be sent throughout the year at four month intervals. This page will automatically pick up the applicable enrollments for you to choose and send at a click of a button. Students have two weeks from the receipt of the invitation email to complete and submit the progression form. 
The Outstanding Progressions tab displays all those outstanding progressions for you to review if you need to. Now, communication is a vital part of your learner's journey. Keep in touch using email templates crafted for straightforward and effective communication. You can also automate your reports, emails, and SMS delivery to individuals or groups, as I mentioned before, once conditions have been met through um, learn cycles. Capture all those email, SMS, and documents against each logbook. You can see all events in the timeline, making it easy for any staff working from anywhere um, to pick up from where you left off. Gather critical feedback and distribute surveys in bulk to your learners through Wisenet using the SurveyMonkey integration. You can also bulk generate your report, email, SMS, and surveys from the course of enrollments page, as I mentioned before. So if you're not using the SurveyMonkey tool, you will be uh, you'll still be able to put in a link and send it as an email um, to your students in bulk. It's essential to monitor your learners' course progress throughout their journey. So I've put in some um, report numbers in here. The 789 is a great report. Now, this is good when you're running batch student loan courses because you have to capture both unit and unit of study data. So you want to know, um, you know, if they're completing their units and then the 788, which gives you kind of a, a quick snapshot of your results for each unit of competency as well as the unit of study. Um, just to, uh, I mean, we have a lot of tickets that come in where people forget to kind of update the unit of competency outcomes and obviously your evidence outcomes are as important as your unit of study because you have to report to both um, NCVR as well as your HEPCAP for now, which is going to be replaced by taxi. And for higher education, you don't have that hassle, you don't have unit of competency, so you can run the 297 report, which will give you like a unit result matrix. So you can just see um, if you've marked those um, if you put in those grades as well as given those results like distinction, high distinction and all those different things. You don't have to use the new reporting tool for 2020 web student loan data. Alistair will take you into the details. However, as you're still required to submit through HEPCAT, it's important to run data integrity checks and trust your data before reporting. I won't be able to run all these reports for you in this session. However, um, feel free to take note of these report numbers and call us if you require further assistance. Um, the data verification reports, again, you know, it's needed now, but it will be replaced in the future. We are recording this session, so it will be available in the videos page again. So if you're not able to take note of it now quickly, you can always go back and watch the video later. All right, you can even create your learn cycle workflows to automatically create completion task reminders, like updating, as I said, you know, sometimes you might forget to update the unit of competency as well as the unit of study. So you could have a task reminding you based on um, a end date for a particular learner. You can update those statuses and status reasons. You can generate and send completion letters out by an email to your learners automatically. And email of course completion and quality indicator surveys, as I said, in bulk. Now, lastly, prevent unauthorized issue or document copying with QR code verification um, of official documents such as certificate credentials and statements of attainment. Your future employers or training providers or universities can self-validate these credentials once you have that QR code. Um, if you need to plan for graduation ceremonies, you can generate a single print file with multiple certificates for easy printing. You also can use the bulk email feature to email the credentials to um, the learners, which can obviously save you time with printing and manual distribution of qualifications. If you're not using this service already, we do have resources on our learn. Um, have, have a read through and if you need help with you know, creating your templates for your certificates, qualifications or statement of attainment or record of results, feel free to log a ticket and we'll be able to help you. Reporting. So at this point, I'd like to hand over to Alistair to outline everything you need to know about reporting through Taxi. Thank you. Thanks, Ash. Uh, so we're just going to do a switch over as screen yeah. sharing. Here you go. All good. Thank you.
say to find where that went. Um, some of you have put in questions there, so I'll address those questions um, after Al's presentation. Thank you. Okay. So you can see my screen, Ash, just to make sure. Yes, yes all good. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, um, I just wanted to take everyone through, give everyone a, an update on the, the status of the taxi project. Um, I'm sure different providers have heard, you know, aware of different, um, are in different stages of understanding of uh, what's been going on with this. Um, but I'm sure that you're all aware that it has been delayed um, until the end of the year. We're, we were meant to have already um, have completed this and um, customers migrated and started using it by now. But um, yeah, with everything that's going on this year, that was delayed. Uh, so just a quick recap, just so we're all on the same page of you know what the taxi project is. So it's essentially a new solution to allow uh, training providers to supply student data to the government for the VSL and higher education reporting purposes. Um, it's intended to replace HEPCAT and it's really a way to modernise the way that the data is supplied to the government um, and it's so that the, it's meant to make it easier for um, them and providers, for pretty much all stakeholders, um, to collect the data, to submit the data and then to continually be monitoring what's going on. Um, so I guess this, the, the modernization of this means that the, the nature of how the data is provided to taxi is changed. So instead of being manually downloading files, you know, monthly or weekly or quarterly or, or whatever, it, um, you know, cycle, uh, someone determines how they want to do it. This is it's designed to now to be streaming. So, um, even if, and so there's two options, um, with regards to the taxi project, there's an API model where it's effectively integration based and you don't, other than making sure that you're collecting the data and entering it into um, WiseNet or um, the, the data will then just sync automatically uh, into taxi and that they still do upload, uh, provide a manual upload option. However, uh, while it is a manual upload, there's still a requirement that that would be, I believe it's less uh, within every seven days that needs to be done because it needs to be as real time as possible. So uh, we're opting for the API approach because uh, it's the one, it's the model that it's the modern approach to do this. And it's the way that really, you know, it really should be done. So we're wanting to do the best uh, practice and it's what the government would, would prefer to. And even though there's a little bit of upfront work in terms of making sure the integration's all working and clean, you know, tidy and all of that, that it means that moving forward, providing the data is being entered, it'll stream over. And then all you need to be really doing is monitoring that streaming and resolving any issues that are alerted. So in terms of how do we get from, you know, having nothing in place and working purely with HEPCAT to being, you know, we're, uh, transitioned completely to taxi. So there was a number of, there's a number of sort of factors in place that we had to go through. So the first thing is you had to deconstruct all of the requirements, look at the fields, um, the changes to the fields. There's some fields are being retired, others are restructured into new places. Uh, and then there's brand new fields. And then some are just updated with completely new values and stuff as well. So we deconstructed all of, all of um, those, different things and made all the relevant changes into WiseNet. Um, and, you know, throughout late last year, you would have seen all of those new fields and we communicated them as well, communicated it. But due to, due to the, uh, the delay, we had to revert some of the changes um, to, in, to include some of those retired fields um, just because HECAT, you know, still requires them and due to the delay. So, but in that being said that all the fields are there um, and, that data collection um, by you guys should already be, be being uh, completed. So that was the first milestone because effectively we need, we need all that data in there before we can start to, to use it. 
The second phase was uh, Proda Connected App. So I'm, I'm hoping that this term Proda is not new to you, um, but it's essentially uh, the way that the, the it's, it's like an authentication method that uh, allows a trust between uh, the provider and then us as the student management system to then communicate to Taxi on your behalf. Uh, so that was implemented as a connected app uh, earlier this year in, I think, February. And it's been there ready for you guys to connect. Um, and pretty much, yeah, so that's, that's been done as well. So then the, the third uh, phase is the, the phase that we're currently um, working on. And we've, due to the delay in the project, you know, we're sort of just tweaking our timelines on, on how we, um, when, when and when we work on this. Um, but certain parts of this is already done and the rest is, yeah, still underway. Essentially, this is the, uh, it's the building block that allows us to use the data with all the fields that we've added into WiseNet, um, use the Proto Connected App information that we need to communicate uh, to Taxi, and then wrap it all up so that, for instance, for streaming, it means that, um, say, for instance, changes to some learners happen or new units of study occur or changes to those units of study, every single one of those um, changes needs to be, we need to be monitoring that. And then we need to stream that data to Taxi in the appropriate way. And so for instance, you know, if unit enrollments or course enrollments have been updated, we can't, we can't send that data to Taxi until the learner is created and we have a reference point. So it, it is really quite complex on how all this works. Um, but the good thing is that, you know, we take care of that complexity for you and make it you know, super easy, so you, you don't really have to think about it. Um, so yeah, once that's done, we'll, we're you know aiming to have that completed um, late, you know, later this year, um, probably a first iteration in November, and a bit of um, sort of testing maybe with a beta customer in December. Um, however, the taxi environment isn't ready for um, like a go live until December anyway, and that's only for um, the beta customers and it's not really until early next year that transitioning you know in bulk you know most customers to taxi will occur and their priority seems to be from the timelines that we've observed is that the higher education providers have a, a stricter time deadline than the vet student loans and hence um, there, there's it seems that the transition for vet student loans can go you know, into and HEPCAT reporting can continue into 2021 um, beyond April. But, you know, it, it's, it, it's our intention to try to migrate people as, as soon as we can um, because it just makes it easier for everyone when, we're, you know, everyone's using the same um, system. So just in terms of a checklist, uh, Taxi has provided a checklist um, that has very clear sort of check boxes for you to go through to make sure um, you're, you're progressing with the eventual transition to go live with taxi but this is just a i guess a really rolled up summary of that checklist um, and so you, i would really recommend that you go to the taxi site and we can even put there is a link on our um we have a taxi trend uh, migration learn resource as well uh, that has a reference to this checklist, but I do encourage uh, all providers to go through and make sure that they're at the point of um, pretty much Protus, it's called Protus Stage 3, which is having connected to WiseNet. Um, so, but yeah, so understanding the taxi project, uh, completing the Protus setup, collect tax, the required taxi data, and then if, you've, if you're doing all these three things, you're effectively ready to go and you're just waiting for the taxi go live date, which is great. Um, and so between uh, now and then, so we're, like I said, we're working on the integration. Um, you just need to continue to keep doing what you're doing, report, collecting all the data that you need to collect, keep reporting your 2020 data in HEPCAT, even um, in 2021, you know, you, you'll be finalizing your 2020 re um, reporting. Um, and so you will just continue to do that in HEPCAT and we'll be aiming to migrate customers to taxi in the first quarter of 2021. Um, and so later in the year, you know, late, you know, really late November, December, we'll be uh, 
starting that communication around what you know what's needed to um, to go through that. So just for those who haven't seen it, so connected apps, there's a new Proda connected app. So you just need to follow the steps there. There's instructions on what you need to do because there is some setup um, that you need to do within the Proto system before you can connect. Um, but it, yeah, pretty pretty well defined. And then in terms of taxi field guidelines, if you're not aware of the, you know, all of the fields and maybe the new fields, particularly these effective to dates and effective from dates, um, we do have a, a resource in Learn that has every single field element and uh, where to find it and how to, how to, how to set it. Uh, the key things are that there are just those effective to and effective from dates is the date I guess it's a really important thing. It's not the date at which the learner may have be obtained citizenship. It's the date in which that um, you're, you're aware of that. I get that's a key thing there um, to be aware of. Um, but other than that, you know, it's not that different, the data collection. You just need to make sure that you are across it. Um, the only other thing to cover was with regards to the USI um, and the new changes to that being um, replacement for instead of uh, Chesson. So we are in the process of updating the ECAF process that when you send an ECAF, there'll be an, an, a new validation that will prevent you from being able to do that unless there's a verified USI. And so that this will assist with um, the well, one that you're collecting the USI, um, but two, the ECAF, ECAF process in early 2021 is going to require this to be a mandatory field anyway. So we're just preempting that. Um, and our recent deployment or recent feature changes to improve the, the USI uh, process earlier this year does make it much easier to find and uh, verify USIs on the fly now within the learner section. So, uh, but when we make that change, we'll be uh, sending out, yeah, required uh, communication and stuff as well. So yeah, just to recap, um, the, the key thing for here is just to make sure that you're, you've, you've done that um, checklist, the taxi provider checklist. And if you've done all these th three things, particularly Proto set up and you're collecting your taxi data, you, you, you're just waiting for uh, um, us to provide the, the next set of communication um, on how to, on, you know, where to from here, the steps to, to, to transition. And we'll be doing everything possible um, to make sure that that transition process is as seamless as possible. Um, because yeah, we want to make sure that, um, it can't be too manual or anything like that. It's going to be too much effort for everyone involved. So, um, but we'll have more, more on that closer to the day. And that's it. Thanks Al. So if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or put it in type in a question. I've answered a couple of those questions there, but, uh, yeah, feel free to um, call us on the 1300 number um, or of course submit a ticket at any point. Now, I'll be also putting in like a 30 minute engagement meeting link that you can book in with any of our team members. Um, I just want to introduce all our team members as well. Al, can you just go to the next slide please for me? Sure. Great, thank you. Here we are, so this is our entire team and we are always here to help you. Now, before you guys leave, um, we are giving away a Wasted hoodie to one lucky participant and um, yeah, we've already like chosen the lucky participant for today. It's Matthew Gibson. Matthew, if you're still in the session, please do raise your hand. Congratulations. We'll contact you soon to get you know, your contact details and sizing and all that. So yeah, congratulations, Matthew. Great, thank you. All right, Al and I will be here to answer any questions for you. Thank you so much for supporting us and attending all these sessions. And if you haven't attended any of our previous ones, please do um, watch the recordings from the videos page on Learn. Thank you.